Hey everyone, this is another quick tip for Rails. It's going to be about the annotate gem. And the gem itself is essentially a way to document your current database logic inside your models, which is a, a nice uh, addition to the app that are, they're just basically Ruby comments that get appended in dynamic fashion when you up update or change the, the database on the fly. And the idea behind it is just to give you an, a good reference so you don't have to go digging into your DB folder uh, commonly that has a schema file of any kind of sort for when the database gets generated, all those things. So I don't have one yet. I just created this brand new app. And I just want to walk you through how the gym works, just a quick guide of, of what it does and how simple it is, uh, but why it's pretty useful. And as it, an app scales, it's going to be a lifesaver in my opinion. So something I add f just kind of as a non-starter or not a non-starter, a, a, Every, every new app, I pretty much add this to that um, is more of a private project, I should say. So I'll add, um, you can either go to your gem file and do it uh, manually, which I might as well just do just to show you, but you wanna add this to your development environment. So scroll down to the, bo the bottom after installing your app. Um, this is just a vanilla Rails app. I'm running, I just install Tailwind for muscle men memory anymore, as well as um, ES build for JavaScript. Uh, just so you know. Uh, okay, so with the gem installed, we can run the bundle and it will go ahead and fetch that and install it. There is a generator we will need to install with annotate, so we'll go ahead and do that too. It's going to be, it's kind of hidden in the, the documentation, but if Rails generate, annotate, install is the script. And that just creates a task that's auto annotate models. It's a rake task that runs every time you essentially run the data database. If we want to really go take a look at that, you totally can. If you go into your lib directory tasks, auto annotate, and you'll see just the, the stuff that comes with it. Um, I believe it's just the, the settings you can override if you want to, uh, depending on what you need. And you can even do stuff like for routing, um, set it to work with active admin, which is another gym, um, all those kinds of stuff. So whatever you want to do, you can totally do it, even if your models are in a different directory for whatever reason. So uh, we'll keep it stock just to start, just to make it easy. And what I want to do is essentially just create a new, a new model, for instance. So I'll say Rails generate scaffold just to save some time. Post title is string um, content text. Let's see. Uh, what else could we add? Thumbnail is uh, attachment, or what is it? What's the shorthand there? Um, we'll do that independently. I think you can say attachment, but I'm not sure. Uh, we could say, um, I don't even have an author. We'll just do string for now, because I don't have a user model yet, but it's something you could add. I'm trying, trying to add a lot of columns just to give you um, the different kind of columns that could be documented with annotate date time something like that cool so let's just run this it'll generate just the scaffold that's stock with rails nothing fancy here and then um, when you go into the app nothing's actually generated at yet but we could boot this server and it'll prompt us to run the migration simply because it hasn't been migrated yet so i'll go to the local host and here it is there. You can click this button or use the command line to do that. You'll get the, the root page since we don't have a, a route established just yet for that, but we could totally do that if we want to. So config routes, I'll just say root to posts index and it should work. There we go. Now, since it's tailwind, it's just very like very basic, nothing fancy here. We got all of our data types just based on what I passed on the generator when we ran that. Uh, so that's just the way to show what's going on there. But if you look back into the post model, we can run annotate and it will go and do what we want. This line right here, it looks like to automatically annotate every time you run Rails DB migrate, either run Rails annotate install, which should totally work. I'm surprised it didn't, but it did work manually in that case. So if we go back to the model now, 
um, you'll see that this was added and it's nice to just kind of mostly document the schema right in front of your eyes in each model. So instead of having to go hunt for the DB folder, find that migration, see what the heck's going on in this, you know, this um, DSL language here that we've added for the, the migration itself. You can just reference it literally in the, the model, which is representing what you're already doing in this DB area anyway. So I find this really powerful. Um, as my apps have scaled, I found this super valuable. It saves me a lot of time just trying to like understand what kind of data type I've added for a specific column and how it relates to another model I might be ref you know, referring to or referencing in some way. So I'd really recommend something like this in your app. It's it's not like do or die, but it's just something that's just gonna be, you know, increase your quality of life. And I feel like it should just be a part of Rails at this point, but that's just an opinion. So hopefully that was helpful. Really quick tip, find it really valuable. So again, that is called the annotate gem. It used to be called annotate models, but it does a lot more too if you wanna make it go nuts in the configuration. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.